Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at cool effects inside Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to change the speed of a clip. Let's take a look at something different. Let's go to Projects and oh, let's take a look at Speed Changes. Here we've got a CGI running woman. Let's find just where her foot's about to hit, right about there. Nice dramatic moment. Be nice if I could freeze that dramatic moment. And in point of fact, Final Cut gives us two ways that we could freeze it. Let's select the clip, put our playhead on exactly the frame that we want to freeze. This time we'll go up to the Smurf on a headset menu, which is the uh, retiming menu. I'm going to go down and apply a hold frame. When you select a hold frame, keyboard shortcut is Shift H. Notice that my clip is not broken. It's still a single clip, but as she's running along, at the moment we hit the hold frame, she freezes, and then after two seconds, she picks back up and starts running again. If we want to change the duration of the freeze, grab the thumb at the far right side of the red bar, not the clip itself. Grab the thumb and drag, and now the freeze holds longer. or the freeze holds for a shorter period of time. If we want to reset the freeze totally, select the clip, go back to our Smurf menu, go down to Normal, keyboard shortcut is Shift-N, and everything is reset. The big advantage to a hold frame is that it doesn't break the clip, and we can easily change the duration of the hold frame without having to go back and do a whole lot of undos. But there's an even better thing. Let's go back to this shot that we want to freeze. We'll say that one right there. Select the clip, go back to our Smurf menu, go to a hold frame. And I realize, you know, that's just the wrong shot. I really want to change the shot. We'll see this little icon right there between the green and the red bars when you double click it not right mouse click, but double click. You can add a speed transition so it slows down into that hold frame, or we can click edit. And when you click edit, the little window appears and allows me to drag so I can say, I wanna change this freeze to that shot right there. And now when I play it, notice the shot that freezes is the one that I drag this little window to. The benefit is it becomes trivial to change the freeze frame by double-clicking on that and selecting Edit. Double-click again, and it disappears. We can change the duration by grabbing this thumb and reset everything back to zero by going to Normal. The opposite approach is to create a freeze frame itself. This would be very similar to what we did with Final Cut 7 or other applications. Let's find where we want to freeze. We'll say right about there. Select the clip. Type Option F. Several things happen at once. We slice the clip. A freeze frame is created with a default duration of 4 seconds rather than 2 seconds. And at the end of it, let's just drag this shorter so we can see what's going on. Spacebar plays the clip and picks up where we left off. But now I've actually got three different pieces of media, my before the split, my freeze frame, my after the split. If I wanted to change this freeze frame, the easiest way to do it is to undo Command Z, find what you want to do instead, we'll say back there, and Option F, and now I've got the clip again. The real benefit, though, to freeze frames is not when you want to put a freeze frame in line. Much better to, if inside the clip it's a whole frame is much easier. But here's a really neat feature. If you select the clip, type Shift F, Shift F, it goes to the browser, matches the in, matches the out, matches the position of the playhead, then type Option F because the browser clip is selected, the freeze frame is made from the currently selected clip, and it's added as a connected clip at the position of the playhead in the timeline. Now I've got this, this standalone piece of media, which I can build into a montage or move elsewhere within the program, and it's separate from the source clip. Hold frames are always built into the source clip in the timeline, and freeze frames have the ability to be connected clip or in the position of the playhead 
in the primary storyline, depending upon whether the primary storyline is selected, in which case it's in the primary storyline, or a browser clip is selected, in which case it's a freeze frame. Here's another thing we can do. Let's say that I really like this polar bear shot. Turn skimming on, cue the polar bear. Look at me, please. Thank you. And then when the polar bear is looking at us, go back down to the timeline, type option F. Make sure the polar bear is selected, type option F. And whatever clip you have selected in the browser will create a freeze frame. It doesn't even have to be related to the clip that's in the timeline. Hold frames integrated with the clip, freeze frames, separate piece of media based upon whatever clip is selected in the browser or in the timeline. Okay, see what else we can do. Oh, 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 watch this. See this downward pointing arrow? Set it to custom, click on it, and now I can have the clip go forward or reverse. I can dial in the percentage of speed. I want it to go 87.3% or dial in the specific duration. I want this to run seven seconds. And you've now got it doing whatever you want it to do. The downward pointing arrow, select custom. Now here's a hidden secret. I guess all secrets are hidden. Here's something that should be secret that won't be because it's not going to be hidden after I tell you. If you, if you want the absolute smoothest slow motion, pick a percentage that divides equally into 200. 66.6, 50%, 40%, 33 and a third, 25, 20, 15, 10. All those numbers divide evenly into 200, and they'll give you the smoothest possible playback. You can use other numbers because you need to, but... For the smoothest playback, especially as you get slower, pick a rate where the number divides evenly into 200. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at cool effects inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com store and look for Webinar 154. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.